Back in the day, a Thursday in 1972, Wayne Gillis and I formed the Illuminata Slideshow. We had a collection of slide overhead and homemade projectors and performed at science fiction conventions around the country. We had one laser. This was a one milliwatt red gas laser from Edmund Scientific, bought for the enormous sum of $100. Here we see that laser sitting in the back of a modern solid state laser. Today lasers are everywhere, and soon I'm sure we will see toys with big frickin' lasers on their frickin' heads. <laughs> Last year I was asked to do a light show to accompany David Bloom on a performance at PenguinCon, which is an open source and science fiction convention. Wayne and I jumped at the chance to get back into laser shows and proceeded to design some new devices, which we built into lunchboxing. Why? Because they were the cheapest metal boxing we could find. The laser devices are built on a base of plywood with motors and electronics screwed to that. We're not talking high tech here. It's all done with lasers and mirrors. The lunch boxing range from antiques such as pigs in space and Captain Astro to more modern themes such as Wally -E and generic spacecapes. As we were performing at a science fiction convention, we gravitated towards space oriented boxing. Here's a shot of the mechanism. You can see the wooden base plate with side rails made from plumbing parts. The laser was extracted from a pointer and held in place with more plumbing, copper pipe hanger. We run this off of 12 volts DC, which is regulated via the circuitry over there somewhere. Uh, for the show, we devised the lateral display system, a poor man's scaffolding. Two shelves hold the lunchbox and the video projectors, and a table below holds the controls and the laptops which run the video. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to aim a lunchbox, but it's kind of difficult. So for the next generation of laser displays, we switch to antique stage lighting, which is what you see around you, including this bantam blaster seen with our banner. The green laser is a powerful unit that moves in time to the music. This is an antique slide projector with a blue laser in it, the molecular disruptor. We buy these antiques on eBay, got them, and outfit them with lasers and other mojo. We set up several of these at the Ann Arbor Mini Fair, Mini Maker Fair last August, and again this uh, last spring. Curtained off a corner of the shed at the fairgrounds, and projected on a white nylon tape to the walls. The red wispy patterns are called Lumia, the red and blue squiggly images are lasers moving in time to the music, and the green multiple beams come from what we call the diffractorator. Everybody loved the show. Lasers have universal appeal, the purity of the colors, the straightness of the beams, and all the cool things you can do with them are ideal for those of us interested in exploring the edges between art and technology. Now, since we went to the trouble of building all this, I decided to write up the process and sell a how-to article to Make Magazine. I set up a bunch of lasers in my internet, the molecular distills, which I used to pitch the story to Make via their web-based submission form. Lucky for me, Make's project editor loves light shows and even wrote a book about him. He greenlighted, so to speak, the project. I wrote the article, took pictures of the parts and processes. The article is in issue 20 with Adam Savage on the cover. Now, we didn't know who was going to be on the cover, so we tried to get our own bad selves up there. Scheduled a photo shoot in my garage, set up a bunch of boxing blasters and molecular disruptors. Here's Wayne and myself all lit up, and I'm diffracting a blue laser with a glass of Chardonnay. Now, the cool thing about being in make is you can inspire others. A guy named Carl Lunt read the article and built his own device, which uses a microprocessor to control a motor rotating a quarter as the diffracted element. Adam Hitchcock built a laser into a John Deere lunchbox. Now, because lasers run on 12 volts, you can power them from batteries in camp. Not that you should, of course, but here we are in Morel Camp in the woods in May with lasers lighting up our camping tarp. That's St. Wayne preparing martinis. The Lunchbox article was a big hit with Dale Doherty, publisher of Make, who's one of our sponsors here. He sent me to Maine in October to represent Make at PopTech, the technology and art seminar. I shipped the box and beamers to Maine and set up shop at a vacant garage. Our next performance was at Confusion, the Ann Arbor Science Fiction Convention. To rehearse for this, we set up in January in my unheated garage in Ann Arbor and shivered our way through. That's Wayne at the controls with David Manning, his MIDI-controlled video projector. At Confusion, the setup looked like this. Ah, uh, yes, it certainly did. Uh, we got beamers on tripods, a laser interocitor, and three video projectors controlled from Mac laptops, with Wayne, David, and myself more or less in control. 
Also involved is Steve Rich, who ran the video on Friday night. So here we are, the gang of four caught a Halloween party last year. Uh, we are continuing to do the Illuminati slideshow, and that pretty much is how I spent the last year. Up to my eyeballs in coherent light. And that's my story, and I'm flicking through it.